Hello. Anyone here like to burn money? <laughs> I don't. In Mercado Libre, also. Um, yesterday, uh, Mercado Libre completed 24 years, right? That's fine. Yes, 24. And in this long journey, we are always researching and searching for efficiency. And one of the things that we did between a, a lot of others was to build our platform. Because if you have uh, over-provisioned stuff, um, if you run underutilized at database, if your developers have a lot of cognitive load, by the end of the day, you are burning money, no? And for sure, our IDP, Fury, help us to save a lot of money. I am Juliano Martins, I am Senior Tech Manager in Mercado Libre. And I am Marcelo Quadros, a software expert in Mercado Libre. We are here today to share some, some lessons that we have learned in this journey to build our IDP, and then we will take some overview about our platform, okay? Uh, first of all, I believe that uh, not, not all the people here uh, know Mercado Libre, but let me present our company. We are the biggest fintech and marketplace in Latin America. We, we are, um, uh, for the Times Magazine, we are one of the 100 um, most uh, infant companies in the world. Um, we are nerds, right? So let's talk about uh, nerd stuff, okay? I, I will not spend time talking about uh, business numbers, okay? We have something like um, 10,000 daily deployments, um, 900 million requests per minute inside our microservices, services, right? Not, I'm not talking about uh, requests per minute, just in front end, okay? It's uh, inside our infrastructure, okay? Uh, what else? Um, 26,000 microservices, most of them are running in a Kubernetes engine that we have built, and we will talk about this. And we have 15,000 developers, okay? Uh, from this population, I believe 8% are platform engineers, and the other people are common developers. Uh, people who do not doubt our, plat uh, our platform engine services, but people who use our platform to code, to develop, okay? Now you know who we are, and I need to share why Fury, because Fury was not uh, created when we founded American Libre. So a, a little bit of history here, I will not perform like uh, Forrest Gump. We are in the city of Forrest, no? Uh, we, it will be a, a short history, I promise. But it, it's a cool history and maybe in the dinner I, I can sh share with you. But in, in the end of 90s, um, Mercado Libre was founded and we started as a Java monolith. I love Java, who loves Java? Just wondering. Just two, two? okay. I love Java. Uh, when Java born, I, I, I took Java here. I'm not very old, but okay. But uh, okay, um, what I was talking, okay. We, we have a monolith in Java, and Mercado Libre started to increase. Um, we win more um, um, developers, and at some point we had 100 developers. And you know, it's not personal. I, I love uh, monoliths, I love microservices, there's no silver bullet. But for our moment, uh, monoliths uh, um, started to create many challenges that um, make us become 
to lose time to market, um, lose moments to um, launch new features, for example. So we need to decouple. And more or less in 2010, we decide to go to microservices architecture. Again, it's a long journey. We started uh, dividing by business units and et cetera, et cetera, and go on. But moving to microservices bring uh, almost mediated gains. Um, we started to be very, very agile. Um, developers uh, have um, a lot of liberty, and our time to market became very, very great, very good. But problems arise, right? Um, we we created, who knows the Netflix uh, Death Star? Uh, the, the interactions between our microservices started to to make us to become um, less um, quick again, and we started to lose again time to market. So again, we have problems to solve. And we lose uh, control over security, costs. Um, there are many developers that like to develop and just forgot to apply some service pass, some service update and something like this. So we lose control. So we need to put order in our house. Then we started to, to think um, something like uh, 2015 in create something that can catalog our applications, our microservices, something that can propose um, centralized CI CD uh, with um, some company um, um, government where we can take uh, decisions, for example, Black Friday, no deploy, um, using a node version of Log4Shell. Do you remember the bug some time ago? Okay, no, you can't uh, deploy with this version, etc. And we want to remove um, cognitive load from our developers, almost to zero, right? Then, eight years ago, we started to create our platform called Fury. And eight years in IT, it's a journey, no? It's a long time. So we, we learn a lot. We have several lessons to share, and we discuss a lot. Um, he lost his hair even when we are fighting. Uh, but we, we choose six lessons that uh, we, we really believe that can um, be useful to you, right? And, but at the end of this lecture, you can find us on LinkedIn, etc. We will be very happy to share more and learn with you also. But okay, um, the first lesson, lesson. I am a Brazilian who barely speaks English, but I am trying my best here. <laughs> uh, the first lesson, buy or build a platform. When we started eight years ago, the, the term um, internal development platform was not widespread. E even the term uh, platform engineering, that now it's a, a Gartner buzzword, right? I, we can see in the Gartner magic quadrant, I, I always forget, okay. But uh, when we started eight years ago, uh, people were not talking about this topic. And we do not have um, products in the market with the maturity and able to do what we are searching. So naturally, we started to build, okay? But if we were about to start today with the um, platform decision, for sure we, um, we will look in the market, evaluate. We, today we have some good products. Some people here uh, have some complete IDPs, we have some specific products, for example, specific for CICD, specific for FinOps, etc. So probably today 
if we will start, we, we will search in the market, right? But we like to build something, but, but probably we will buy today. But this is not the, the, the lesson here. Uh, the lesson here is that as nerds, developers, we, we tend to fall in love with technology. And we saw many companies that fail because people started to, to create big things, big platforms, big uh, infrastructure, big ideas, and, and a lot of good ideas. But they, they forgot the, the most important, that it's the product, that it's the what keep alive a company. So the first lesson is take care on your product. Okay, technology, it, it's important, but uh, many people are working more in support the products that do not exist. So the company failed. So we started with our platform and building big things when our products are really ready, okay? Lesson two. Okay. Uh, when you, when you decide to start your journey, you must uh, find for opportunities and quick wins, something that you can develop or create that you can use in order to, to, to find some, some support from your executives or stakeholders that can be developers. So, uh, Think in, in, in develop something that can reduce uh, repetitive work. For example, start with some, some service that can abstract from the developers um, some repetitive task or some repetitive service that they are always coding. Find ways to, to reduce costs. This is magic. So, we, we, we need executive support. And the best way to, um, to have executive support is talk about money, right? At Mercado Libre, we, the, the first service that we have developed eight years ago, it's the job services that basically abstract from our developers um, how they needed to, to code and create something to schedule services. For example, using Quartz and Java, like cron jobs, right? So this uh, bring us some immediate win. And then we started to create more services, more catalogs, and always showing the wins. And then we, we got support, and then we have money, we have support from directors, and it's a win-win. Lesson three. You cannot impose uh, a platform or um, a service. Many times that we, we have, when we, we, we try to do this with our developers, we fail. Um, you need to, to make developers feel, and not just feel, uh, they must know that they are part of your platform. Um, they have the power to decide what will be in your platform roadmap, right? Um, and a good, 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 good way to do this, it's always trying to talk a lot with your developers and search the quick opportunities with these people. But sure, we have the lesson four, that is controlled freedom. I just told in the lesson three that um, developers are your best friend, but you will limit the freedom of your best friend. And this will create some, some fights, algunas peleas, and you will need to show to your developer that a platform, a good platform, 
we will always provide a self service stuff when he need to create some services, some application, etc. He will select from some pre-validated um, technology, etc. And maybe he will not be able to create stuff in in some technology that he really want. But you you need to show to your developer that he's part of a, a bigger context, the company that, that have its own interests. Talking about um, um, regulatory stuff, uh, security, costs, and sometimes freedom need to be controlled. What is very strange, you know? By the way, wh why it's confusing? Uh, because he will not be, ha have freedom to choose whatever he wants, but he will have freedom to decide how to develop. He, he, he must to, to know things, for example, 12 factors, solid, clean code. He must to know how to create a good system design, um, when to use some kind of queue, or some um, real-time uh, stuff. So the challenge will continue existing. But the tools, the technology that uh, he will be using, he will be able to use, will be limited because he's part of some biggest um, context. Another thing that I just remember now from the company perspective, the, this kind of um, control and freedom, it's very nice because um, when we have a platform, we remove a lot of cognitive load from our developers, and we abstract a lot of things, right? So to your company, we can have less expert and more, um, more people with uh, less expertise, less seniors, I mean. So you can have a extruder, a, a, some employee extruder, uh, like a pyramid, with a fewer expert and more people uh, with less knowledge, but able to work with your platform. So efficient costs. You will be um, having some equilibrated Pyramid. Your platform will not handle all the cases. Developers are creative. And this is okay because um, your platform do not need to, to, to implement everything that the developer needs, right? At Mercado Livre, for example, 20% of everything that we have lives outside our platform Fury. And it's okay. And what is this? It's uh, out of the box solutions, uh, proofs of concept, and it's okay. But what's the point? In this world that it will not exist in your platform, many problems will arise. Because in this world, usually developers will have more freedom. And freedom? They will forgot to apply the, the patches. They will forgot to up the, upgrade the Docker image with the latest uh, backdoor vulnerability fixes, etc. It happens. So, in this world that we, you will be creating outside your platform, you will need to take care and somehow uh, create some control. At Mercado Libre, we have some tools. We are based on uh, infrastructure as a code. So we can detect uh, drifts, uh, we can detect uh, uh, the technologies that people are using in this scenario. And it's, it's not simple this way, for example, a, a developer cannot ask us something, for example, I need uh, some AWS or GCP account because I want to develop in Elixir. No, it's a big no, why? But if the developer proved to us that it's really a business um, requirement 
okay, here's the account, and you can develop. And finally, wow. And finally, when you create your platform, you need to worry with support and training, else you will fail. You need to, to invest in creating documentation and really training. At Mercado Libre, we have some education division that uh, creates um, boot camps, uh, hackathons, uh, ramp up courses, and something very cool that I really recommend, it's to have uh, SMEs, uh, subject matter experts, people from your platform engineering team that will work very closely with developers and will help developers to create uh, good system designs and not only troubleshooting, right? But uh, trying to, to extract from your platform the best, right? I believe that I use it out of time, a lot of time here. It's time to meet more theory, no? Marcelo? Oh, good afternoon. So it's time to present theory. So, but before we jump in the technical, in the technical details, it's very important to contextualize uh, where theory is positioned in our company and how it integrates with our IT strategy. As you can see, we are organized into products and capabilities. Well, what does that mean? Basically, we focus on creating highly specific products. And those products are built based on capabilities, which means that the capabilities can be leveraged across our ecosystem or can be reused. This way, we are avoiding, for example, duplicating features. Within this context, that theory plays one central role. And one important thing to say is that Every time we detected a cross feature in a product, uh, we promote this to a capability. It's very important for us. Here we can see two examples, uh, two practical examples of a products built based on capabilities: fraud prevention and credit offering products. Both of them use risk scoring calculation, which utilizes machine learning capabilities. Both of them developed in our platform. Nice, but tell me more about this platform. This platform is Fury. Fury is an internal development platform that helps developers to create and manage their applications. Fury includes a set of services and tools that to help developers create applications. For example, using Fury, developer can create a database, a caching service, uh, it has config services, secret services, a lot of things that you can imagine that helps developer create an application. Nice, but behind the scenes, or behind the scenes, Fury is composed by a set of apps and in cloud services. Okay, also, we have a web interface and a Fury CLI, because developers love CLI, and you need to create one. By using web interface in Fury CLI, developers can manage anything related to the application. For example, manage their database used by the application, the caching service. Also, we have a dedicated back office that the cloud and platform engineers use to perform some administrative tasks. Also, performing some troubleshooting because sometimes things go wrong and we go through back office to check what happens. Another important thing here is the SDKs and APIs offered by Fury. It plays a very important role in Fury because it's responsible to connect cloud services that we use with the application that developer uh, create. Uh, basically, <clears throat> all of this abstraction is focused on architecture based on anti-corruption layer. Technically, uh, we can say that Fury is a, I'm not sure if it's clear, but there is, there is a box here. I'm not sure if it's clear. I think the contrast is a little bad, but there is a box here. Uh, basically, it's a abstraction layer that acts as an intermediary between cloud services and applications developed on Fury. And all of this abstraction is achieved by using the SDKs that we have mentioned before, 
also some sidecars that we use to, to abstract the, the things, you know? And what the thing here? The, the developer will never interact with the cloud service directly. They, a, a, they will always use a SDK, which will communicate with this anti-corruption layer. And what the great thing here? Suppose, for example, you would like to uh, perform some update. It's very easy because we do not need to change the application code. We usually thought only on this layer. Another great thing, which service should I use from AWS or for GCP? Platform decides. But how? Based in some criteria like latency, costs, from the developer perspective, is indifferent. Regardless of the cloud provider or partner being used, the developer will always interact with SDKs. And it's a key element when you talk about our multi-cloud strategy, because the platform can decide. A very good example is an object storage service offered by Fury. Once the developer interacts with the SDKs, from the developer's perspective, it's indifferent in which cloud the object is being stored. From the developer's perspective, what really matters? I need to save my object. I need to retrieve my object. Is it working? Okay, in which cloud? Doesn't matter. Most of the times, it doesn't matter. But the platform will base in some criteria to decide that. Maybe a service from AWS can be more expensive or not. And we can, have, can create some, some rules, some criteria to decide that. And from the developer perspective, the things tend to be transparently. This is one of the great things about this abstraction. Okay, but now that you talk about the integration, how Fury provides services, how can I do to create a microservice and deploy it in production? By using Fury, a developer can go from zero to production in only four steps. From zero to production, four steps. All of these steps uh, is based on a no-ops development culture that ensures that all of this process tends to be very simple. And the cognitive loads for the developers, it's inexistent. Basically, it's, they do some clicks and things like that, and Fury will perform all of the tasks related to the infrastructure, repository creation, DNS configuration, a lot of things related to that. From the developer's perspective, suppose I decided to create a Golang application. Step number one, I will select the language. After some clicks, give a name, some click. Fury will create a repository. We will associate the correct pipeline. We'll create some monitoring mechanisms, some costs, dashboards, and at the end, a scaffolding. After that, developers can use the Fury CLI, clone it to local machine, and run it locally. Okay, that's nice, but how can I deploy? The second step that we call create web scope, it's a pseudo environment. The developer can choose, for example, the criticality. What's the criticality of this app? Ah, it's a production, it's text. Based on that, Fury will create some another stuff related to the infrastructure, as DNS, the infrastructure you see, uh, alerting, logs, optimizing, outscaling. Again, developers only perform some clicks. Now, okay, I have uh, my template running locally. I created our web scope, which is a the environment. I will develop some feature, and I will open a pull request. When I open a pull request, Fury will perform a lot of quality checks, will build and test the application. In the end, if everything is fine, Fury provides a version to be deployed. Developer will select the application, the, the version generated, and the previous environment created, and click in deploy. As we are using Kubernetes engine, in engine, uh, in less than one minute, you can have your application up and running in production. Thanks Kubernetes, because you can spin up a pod in some seconds, and it's very interesting for us. 
talking a little bit more about the deployments. Everything that happens on our deployment process is monitored, it's audited. Everything is on the control. And we can do a lot of things here. Uh, here we have an example of a, a rollback at deploying automatically by Fury. How Fury does that? During the deployment, for example, in this case, it's a blue green, and Fury collect metrics during the deployment. After detecting a problem with the new version, Fury decides to perform an automatic rollback. This way, avoiding a problem, for example. This is very good. Also, we can use, for example, policies to configure a lot of things over the deployments and control the entire process. For example, uh, who can deploy, when can deploy, how can deploy. After all, we are not so, we, we are not so crazy to allow, for example, deployments during a Black Friday. I think it should not be a good idea. And we can use this feature to prevent this kind of thing. Okay, uh, now that I know how to create an application, I know how to deploy, I'm interested to know how can I monitor my application? And the answer is by using this application. I don't know if you have heard about. Do you know this company? <laughs> this is a very cool, no? The data, the, the, for every application created on Fury, Fury will create a default dashboard in Datadog with the main metrics used by this kind of application. In the case of a web application, for example, we have here some traffic metrics and some resource metrics. This is a, just a small part of the, the dash. It has a lot of information. Also, by using the SDKs, uh, Fury SDKs, the developer can create a lot of custom metrics and additional dashboards and take advantage of Datadog to visualize and configure alerts for any anomaly detected. This is something very great uh, in, in Datadog plays a very uh, interesting role uh, in Fury. Okay, but I know how to create my application, I know how to deploy, I know how to monitor, but I'm asking to myself, so before, when we start this, this, this session, uh, I remember uh, we talk about Fury and we talk about Fury is based on cloud services. When I'm working with cloud services, I would like to know about the costs. Oh, and those Fury provide something related to that? And the answer is yes. In Fury, there is an entire section that you can see everything related to the ex application expenses. For example, how much I'm spending with my, my key value store service, for example. How much I'm spending with the database service. You can check anything here, and also Fury provides a comparison between the weeks, and it becomes very easy, for example, to identify when some feature that you aggregate or some chain has impacted your costs. That is something very powerful. But how do I know if I am spending more than I should? It's a great question, no? And here we present the opportunities. What is opportunities? Opportunities is a mechanism that runs on background by collecting metrics and detecting opportunities for the application. Every time it detects opportunities for the application, it will send you an email, and also in the opportunities page, you can see a lot of opportunities detected for the application. The opportunities can be of a various type. It can be, for example, about a vulnerability found. It can be about a sidecar update. It can be about a SDK update. It can be about, for example, log for shell problem. Who remembered this? So when this problem happens, the opportunities, for example, save our day. Okay, here for example, uh, we have uh, an example of Fury has detected an oversized related to the key value store service used by the application. 
By clicking on details, the developer can check the numbers suggested by Fury. If the developer, for example, wants to apply, they click on execute, and again, Fury will perform everything without developer tools on the infrastructure. Fury will perform everything automatically. And another thing important to say is that some of these opportunities, if the developer does not perform the action to execute, for example, uh, related to the vulnerability, Fury will perform automatically updates. This enables always uh, be uh, updated about some vulnerability found or something like that. We keep our environment secure. Another great feature that we have related to costs is that since we are using Kubernetes, we implement a mechanism that we can scale our application to zero replicas. Oh, how does that work? Every time we detect that the application has not received traffic for some time, we scale it to zero replicas and it create free up space to other applications. Imagine, for example, your test environment during the weekends. In Mercado Libre, we can scale the entire environment to zero and saving a lot of money. So, that's it from my part. Oh, but before uh, we move on forward, uh, it's important to mention that nowadays, Fury is, uh, I think, eight years old. No? Yeah. Eight years old. And during the, this time, we have working hard to aggregate more and more services in Fury. We have just uh, did a brief uh, overview about some features, but we have a lot of features here. This slide will not be enough to put all of them. And one of the most important things that we'd like to say is that a developer on Mercado Livre using Fury, they, they have uh, so much time to put enforcement in things that really matters. For example, in Mercado Livre, developers don't waste time dealing with infrastructure setup, uh, infrastructure creation, terraforms, some YAMLs, or things like that. They use Fury. And they focus on business and architectural decisions. And it makes the difference. So that's it. Juliana, anything more to aggregate? Yeah. Uh, so, finally, as a conclusion, we have a lot of services here that implement some abstraction, abstraction to our developers. Just doing some quick um, account, um, every time that a developer needs to create some service like this one, it's one click and no ops, zero administration. So we are saving a, a lot of money, a lot of time, and we started this presentation talking about money, right? Because this really call attention. But it's not about money, it's about uh, security, performance, resilience. So if we were about to take the decision to invest in a platform or not, the answer is for sure. I hope that we are clear to you, our message, we decide to have a generic presentation to share a lot of different ideas and concepts, and we will be happy to answer questions and make contact in LinkedIn. And thank you, Datadog, for this opportunity.